Good day, welcome back to my channel. I am still Mr. Bennett Iloka and uh, today we continue our lecture on the Nigerian Lego method, okay? In the previous lecture, we looked at what is law. We also considered the nature of law as compulsive, dynamic, and uh, capable of suppressing deviant behavior in the society, okay? We also looked at sociology of law and then the philosophy of law. So today we start our lecture by looking at law, morality, and uh, justice. We try to conceptualize these three terms and then build a relationship between the three of them. They function together. For, 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 for a law to be uh, efficient and effective, it must be built on morality and it must be justifiable, okay? That is to say, it must be applicable to all elements in the society. Okay, so let us go into the main components of today's lecture. Previously, we have already defined law as the rules that have attached obligations. That is to say, there are consequences for not obeying them and then benefits for obeying them. So in the absence of obligation, then there is no law. For law to exist, it must have a attached obligations. What, what people are expected to do, how they are expected to do it, the possible implications of not acting in that particular way. Okay, for instance, if you come to, if you come late to the lecture, in a physical lecture setting, the lecturer might have the power to decide whether you should enter his or her class or not. Are you getting it? So the, the obligation there is that you must come on time for you to benefit from partaking in the lecture per se. Okay, so now we are going to conceptualize morality and justice and then build better understanding of the relationship between these three concepts. Okay, so what is morality? Morality is the foundation of natural law. It, it is based on the norms. It is based on the uh, uh, principles or cultures or values of the people within the society. Okay, it is concerned mainly with the general principle of right conduct, doing the right thing at the right time. Okay, maybe not at the right time always, but essentially doing the right thing. Are you getting the point? Even if the right thing is wrong in the face of the law, Morality demands that you do it. Okay, so the question now is what is right based on the human views? Okay, and then usually the norms and values of the society What is right is defined. Are you getting the point? Okay, so for instance, uh, we can say that In such society within this Nigerian setting there are places where under aged girls are being allowed to or forced to or capable of getting married off by more elderly men. Are you getting the point? Okay. So is it the writing to them, to their views, to their beliefs? Yes, it is the like uh, the writing, but it is what the law says. Well, uh, you know, in the Nigerian society, like we did mention in, in our first uh, lecture, we operate two different codes: penal code for the uh, north and criminal code for the uh, south. Okay, so. Depending on the penal code, it might not be an issue, but in the criminal code, it is against the law. Are you getting the point? Okay. So essentially, morality is all about people's value, their norms, their culture, what shapes them, what shapes their daily lives, what they consider to be right. Are you getting it? Okay. So for instance, in certain society within the Igbo culture, bright price might be quite exorbitant why in certain areas it could become easily uh, affordable that is their morality that is what they consider to be right depending on the culture we are considering okay so based on this definition you can see that there is no attached obligation okay whether you want to do it or not is independent of your will if you feel that it is the right thing to do you will do it if you feel that it is not the right thing to do you will not do it there is no punishment for not doing it or or, or um, possible benefits a defined benefit for doing it okay there could be benefits and advantages but it is not guaranteed that if you do or act in a moral way you are going to get this uh, benefit normally the consequences are attached to more of spirituality whereby they say that if you don't do the right thing this is what will before you in the future or in the life after are you getting the point okay so what is justice justice deals with the proper administration of law okay that is in jurisprudence it relates to the constant and perpetual disposition of the legal matters or disputes to render every man according to his uh, dues 
Okay, justice is all about ensuring that everybody is equal before the law. If we say that death penalty is applicable for murder, then whether it is a rich man or a poor man that, that um, murdered someone, then the penalty should be applicable irrespective of the person's social status. Okay, so justice is all about placing all men equal before the law so that they will be able to either benefit as a result of their actions or face consequences as a result of their actions okay so based on the above discussions it is now clear that morality deals with what is morally right what the people view as being morally right their social values okay and it is internally generated it is within it is within their mind it is within their thought it is, it is within their self-defined concepts because what is right here might not be what is right elsewhere. For instance, in the East here, we can enjoy pork as much as we want. But in the North, it is not uh, easily obtainable due to their religious uh, principles and beliefs. So what is right to us is wrong to them. And what is wrong to them is uh, right to us. Okay, That is why we say it is internally generated. It is not something that is written down. Okay? So on the other hand, Justice deals with man-made or positive law and how to properly administer such laws okay, throughout the human agents to, en to ensure uh, uh, overall compliance by the society, by the people for whom those laws have been uh, developed. And who are the people that are in charge of ensuring its overall compliance? They are the law enforcement uh, agencies or officers. Okay, Therefore, if you consider the definition of law, as rules with attached obligations morality as internally generated view of what is wrong or right and then justice as the proper administration of law we can now say that it is necessary that justice is applied in making laws that regulate human behavior okay and then in such development we also need to consider morality you cannot come to the east now and set a law that prohibits the consumption of pork when you know that it is easily uh, consumed here but such law can be developed in the north because it is already against their morality are you getting the point okay therefore law shouldn't be harsh okay repressive or intolerable otherwise then there will be a quite significant level of civil disobedience Okay, so uh, uh, let's say uh, take the classical case of uh, Nigerian government banning Bamo, which is a stable meat uh, product across Nigerian dishes and their societies and cuisines. They say, what happened? You could actually see that the level of civil disobedience was high because people felt that they were being deprived what they used to enjoy. So that is what will happen when you make laws that are harsh, repressive, or intolerable. Okay? Are you getting the point? So let us proceed further. So because of this level of civil disobedience that could amount as a result of poorly defined or made laws, we can now say that uh, lex injusta, non lex est, an unjust law is not uh, a law at all because once the society, once the people whom the law is designed to govern view such law as being unjust to them, as being unjust to their overall way of life, then there will be civil disobedience, per se, and that is why the law will not be as effective as it's supposed to be, even when there could be prescribed uh, consequences for disobedience. You should still expect that a significant number of these people in the society we disobey such laws because it conflicts with their morality. It conflicts with their norms. Are you getting the point? Okay. However, justice should not be designed to enlarge the course of morality. Yes, it should be separate. You know, that is the main uh, uh, views held in the positive school where they say that law is law and it should not be attached to morality or any other social uh, phenomenon or events. Okay. This is because it would lead to the morally conscious members of the society seeing themselves as above the law okay if they feel that they know what is right if they feel that they know what to do within a specific situation then they could start to neglect what is the law 
if the law says don't consume pomo are you getting the point and they feel that consumption of pomo is the, the the best option for them it is morally right then they could see themselves as uh, above the law okay so that is just it uh, but we can still make a good example with uh, the recent uh, case of pos vendors who had to increase their overall charges due to scarcity of uh, the naira notes okay even when the cbn stipulated that such increase is illegal and should be dropped to 200 per withdrawal for 10,000 naira the pos vendors were still charging upwards of 2000 okay the law is there but it's obedience the obedience to it is not there are you getting the point okay so that is why we say if if we try to merge the law so much with morality then there could be a case of where by people who feel that they are morally right or they have a higher level of moral consciousness could consider themselves to be above the law that is why we must separate the law from uh, morality this is morality keep it aside this is the law that will be used to render to all men according to his uh, dues okay therefore morality is the main constituent of law because laws are developed based on what the people feel is right to them okay murder is wrong so the people feel that it is wrong to kill someone then the laws will be developed to attach punishments to murder are you getting the point okay and its administration overall should be rooted in a uh, justice like we said whether it is a poor man that kills someone or a rich man whatever the law stipulates as it relates to the punishment for murder it should be applicable to every individual irrespective of their social uh, class are you getting the point okay so we proceed further therefore the essence of justice is most pronounced in the criminal law where no party should be denied of it okay so they normally in the criminal law there are three parties in a case the victim that was killed probably the 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 accused who killed the victim and the society whose values have been defied are you getting the point if 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 for instance uh, you go to a core Muslim uh, setting within the north and you kill pork, for instance, then their views, their values is against the consumption of pork and you intentionally came to their environment also acknowledging the law and disobeyed the law, then it is not just about the animal that you have killed or you as the person who disobeyed the law, but also benefit of ensuring that you suffer for that disobedience so that people in the future will not redo it. In, in essence, keeping sanity within the society. Are you getting it? Okay. That is to say, the person accused of committing the heinous crime, the victim of the crime, and the society all deserve justice. Okay. And uh, this is the view that was uh, pronounced by Justice Uputa. Okay, in the case of Josiah versus the state, 1985, okay, so you can still go about to read the entire case. This is very, very important as a law student. Whenever you see case, try, aside the summarized views, try to read them up to have a concrete foundation of what the case is all about. Okay, so in this case, Justice Oputa opined that justice is not a one-way traffic. It is also not a two-way traffic okay it is actually a three-way traffic whereby there should be justice for the accused that committed the heinous crime justice for the victim that was probably murdered okay uh, whose body is crying for heaven for vengeance okay and finally justice for the society at large whose social norms and values have been desecrated and broken by the criminal acts are you seeing it so the 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 accused has the justice of being uh, uh proved beyond reasonable doubt the disease has the justice of being ensured or given the opportunity to see that the accused suffers for his crime 
then the society has the justice of being protected as a sanction for people as a repulsive action you know one of the main 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 elements of our nature of law was uh, that is uh, uh, suppresses deviant uh, behavior so as a suppression for subsequent related behavior in the society when you see that people are being punished for certain crime then your intention to commit such crime will likely decrease okay that is what we are trying to say so justice is a three-way traffic for the victim for the accused and for the society at large okay thank you so going further Jesse Oputa also reflected the same view in another case, which is about Ngwakalo and the state. And in this particular case, it referred to a pathetic uh, scenario whereby serious injustice was committed by the trial court and the appeal court still decided not to correct such erroneous uh, judgment. Then the case was moved down to the Supreme Court where the error was uh, corrected. In this case, Pesce, the, the appeal court, the court of appeal or the appeal court stated the law that what is source for the goods should also be source for the gander. Okay, so justice doesn't have two weights and measures, whereby one is being used to you know weigh a worthy man and another is being used to weigh a poor man. Okay, it was a case of a a, a, a worthy man and a poor man who were actually involved in a crime. Okay whereby the worthy was vindicated why the poor was left to suffer the crime okay so going further justice should be one and the same even and blind to all social uh, disparities and distinctions in status of health or wealth okay it doesn't matter the position you occupy in the society what is applicable is applicable for everybody are you getting the point although this could potentially raise some questions as it relates to the Nigerian society, but let us not go there yet. Let's just focus on the uh, 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 discussions that we are having here. Okay, so justice is a respecter of nobody. It doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care about social status. It doesn't care where you are from. It doesn't care who is your father. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. And according to the law, you are going to face what is stipulated by the law. Are you getting the point? So therefore. The poor appellants ought to have been discharged just like the second rich accused. And this was the error in their judgment. Are you getting it? This is the main error that the Supreme Court highlighted from the trial judgment, which was also ignored by the appeal court. Okay. So they pointed out that you cannot acquaint one party for a case and then hold another party for the same case with similar circumstances and materials. Are you getting it? Okay. So, in essence, justice is so important that mere technicality should not be allowed to defeat the cause of justice, okay? So, you, you should not approach justice with uh, trying to be too logical about it. Whatever is stipulated in the law should be allowed to avail to every individual. Are you getting the point? So, this is why JSC Oputa, you will continue to hear about JSC Oputa when you talk about Nigerian legal method or the essential elements of Nigerian law per se. He is one of the most pronounced uh, scholars, S scholar, judge, all combined together because he, in his, uh, uh, in his uh, ratio dissidenti, he does uh, uh, present some scholarly works. Why in the obita? Then he makes pronouncements as it, as it relates to the law itself okay so he also echoed the united australia versus barclays bank that every case irrespective of its paucity okay or how inelegant the pleading of the appellant was should stand or fall on the admitted facts and on the primary court as it relates to the ability or intention or the supposed intention of the court to do substantial justice so whatever you present to the court the primary facts should be used by the court to do substantial justice there is no need applying technicality here and there or trying to see how you can diffuse some elements uh, uh, presented before the court not minding how elegant the pleading might be it doesn't matter how elegant the pleading was the main thing is to ensure 
that the material facts presented to the court are used to reach uh, inform the decisions okay so with uh, law morality and the justice concluded we now move to law order and the uh, freedom still going by the same concept we have already defined law as uh, rules which attach the obligations okay so now what is order order is an authoritatively given mandate that is it is coming from a superior being to an inferior being whereby perpetual Ob perpetual obligation perpetual obedience is expected from the inferior being so we say that it is an authoritatively given a mandate command or direction rules or regulations that are designed to govern people's action or behavior okay and they are issued by a legitimate or lawful authority and they command obedience and compliance to his terms okay when you are ordered to do something then you must be obedient to it if you are served with a court order to report for a certain case or arraignment then it is expected that you will comply it's expected that you must obey and this obedience has its uh, consequences okay so what is freedom on the other hand freedom deals with the state of being free liberty okay self-determination absence of restraint you can do whatever you want okay it is actually the opposite of uh, slavery other seems to have an attached element of slavery because you don't have option whatever you are told to do you are going to do it then freedom on the other hand is the opposite of it okay it is the ability of one to freely act in a way that he willfully and voluntarily wants without any hindrance okay or uh, interference from uh, external forces okay so that is why we say it is the absence of restraints in our choice of thoughts decisions and actions we think about what we want to take we make decisions about things that concern us and we take actions okay you could just wake up today and decide not to go to lecture are you getting it it is your free will your free liberty but you must also acknowledge the fact that your absence in the class could actually hinder your overall understanding of the concepts of of the course or the discussions that have been made within the lecture period okay so as you are acting freely also acknowledge the potential consequences that could come with your actions okay so aside certain prohibitions and checks that might be imposed by the democratic culture freedom ensures that people can do anything they want to okay in an orderly and proper way in as much as it doesn't uh, uh, interfere with the regular life of the society at large because where where one's freedom ends is where one's freedom begins okay so you own a church you are causing a, a public nuisance through your voice pollution you should understand that in that state where you have uh, decided to mount giant microphone that people are also sleeping so they could decide to bring an action against your church because you are disturbing their peace of mind are you getting it okay so order and freedom seem to be antithetical yes because they they, they seem to move in different direction order commands obedience while freedom it's all about liberty the free will to do whatever you want to do are, are you getting the point okay okay so order is born out of legitimate authority that prescribes a given course that an individual must obey in its entirety in its entirety okay if you if you don't come for the exam then you should expect to fail that is it before you can stand the chance of passing the examination you must at least first come for the examination get seated get your paper and write something are you getting it so if you don't come automatically you have failed okay why on the other hand freedom gives the individual a particular way to conduct himself in as much as he does so in a lawful way are you getting it so although the order is that if you don't come to exam you are going to fail you also have the freedom to decide to fail and come back next year you are free to to do it i mean it's out of your own will nobody is going to compare you to 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 come to the examination but there is an existing order which is the code of conduct as it relates to 
students' assessment. And the other is that if you don't come to the examination, you are going to fail. Okay, but if you decide to exercise your liberty and decide not to come, then good and fine. You next year you come back for the exam. Are you getting the point? Okay, so freedom or liberty in its own expresses oneself as they desire to be, as they want to be, in an unrestricted uh, measure, okay? However, it should not be left unrestricted because its restriction is pivotal for the society. If you allow freedom to be freely and completely unrestricted, that is to say people can just wake up and decide to do things that could endanger the entire society and then the entire system people could just wake up and start shooting each other that is freedom you have you, they could have the freedom to sh to wake up and start shooting but that restriction that that uh, inhibiting control are you getting it is the main element that makes it functional within a democratic uh, society so that once you wrong someone or once you act against someone's lawful right then you should expect potential consequences okay so this is why lord denin said that the right solution is on balancing the interests of the society and the liberty of the citizens okay which is which is what is supposed to be you know it's founded more on the principle of a utilitarianism whereby whatever benefits the major part of the society should be allowed to prevail okay so if mother is a, a, a wrong in society and also wrong in the law, although you could have the freedom to decide to kill somebody, because it is within your will, it is within your thoughts, then there must be a need to create a balance whereby if you make such mistake, you should be made to face the consequences so that it could suppress possible related deviant behavior in the society. Okay? So, that is why we say virtues in medio start. Are you getting it? So virtue lies in the middle, the middle of creating this balance between what the society wants and what you want as a, an individual. Okay. So while you could have the liberty to conceive the thought of mother, society does not want mother. So once you finish thinking about it, go back and sleep. Don't kill somebody. If not, if you try it, then there will be consequences. Okay, so the best judicial demonstration of balancing this interest in between what the society wants and what the citizen wants is pronounced in the case of R.V. Manley, okay, where a woman uh, uh, went to the police to report a case of uh, her handbag being stolen. She gave a description of the possible uh, man that snatched her bag. Okay, which led the police to conduct numerous investigations and uh, 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 arrest uh, some men that met this description. However, it was found out that uh, nothing actually happened. So she was charged for wasting police time, okay, and also putting these uh, arrested men into suspicion, you know, because people will now be suspecting them as possible. Uh, uh, criminals that go about stealing people's uh, handbag. Therefore, the woman was charged with the misdemeanor of a uh, public mischief. Are you getting it? So you can't just wake up and go to police and report something that did not happen. You should expect that if it is found out that such thing didn't happen, then you will face the consequences because you have endangered society in some way or the other okay so this is where we are going to stop for today but uh, uh, do expect uh, lectures from now from our hands for us do expect uh, lecture notes every day because we have to finish the entire course within uh one or one or two weeks or thereabout okay so thank you so much for coming back and uh, don't forget to like share and comment whatever question you have you should be able to uh, try your best to comment uh, whatever questions you have and be assured that we are going to make videos to answer your questions. Thank you so much and uh, we hope to see you in our subsequent uh, videos.